What's up, everybody? My name is Scott Waters, and welcome to the Light to Metal. It is time for a rock metal update. That's right, time for a rock and metal update. Um, took a trip out to uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Spent some time with my buddy Steve, um, Harmless Rebel on YouTube. If you haven't checked his channel out, please do so. Uh, he's a metal dude like me. He also likes a variety of other things, probably like I do. Um, but uh, check his channel out. I spent uh, four days with him, basically. We went out and we saw Raven uh, at a small club there, and they were superb wearing my shirt I picked up from the show. Also picked up a uh, Metal City patch at the show and a uh, Raven button at the show great show not a lot of people there the, the club was requiring you had to have a, uh, a vaccine card and some other crazy stuff so there was probably 50 people in the crowd but man raven just didn't care how many people were there they tore it up super energetic on stage it's hard to believe those guys are as old as they are and and, and put on a stage show like that and play like they do it's still just i mean it was insanely good. The, the, I mean, if you get a chance to see Raven on this Metal City tour, do it. They are really, really good. If you're from the Georgia area um, and you missed the show, they're coming back again uh, into Georgia in January. So make sure you hit that up. But while I was there, Steve and I visited a bunch of stores. He showed uh, his um, vinyl haul from all the different stores we went to through the uh, Georgia area. Um, just recently, and I'll try to remember to put a link below so you can find his his video. Uh, and I'm going to show you mine as well. This is a mixture of 12-inch vinyl and 7-inch vinyl. I picked up a lot. Some of this is VCLT too, so I'm going to get right into it. Uh, I don't remember what store I picked up what from. I didn't even remember the names of the stores. So uh, if you go watch his video, he talks about what stores we went to. Um, we went to so many stores I couldn't I couldn't even tell you. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, grab this uh, Dio bootleg. This is uh, Summerfest 1994 live radio broadcast. Uh, this is Tracy G on uh, guitar and Jeff Pilson on bass and backing vocals and Vinnie Apice on drums. Um, fantastic sound quality, great show. Um, it's got a total of 10 tracks, so it's not the entire show, but uh, Holy Diver, Man on the Silver Mountain, Heaven and Hell, Don't Talk to Strangers, Rainbow in the Dark, Jesus, Mary and the Holy Ghost, which is um, you know from that tour. Uh, and then Strange Highways, Stand Up and Shout, Last in Line, and of course, We Rock. Uh, nothing extra inside of it. It's just black vinyl. Um, does have a custom center label. But glad to pick that up. It wasn't real expensive. Um, I can't remember exactly how much it was, but it doesn't make a difference. It wasn't super expensive. Normal cost of a vinyl, so I was happy to find that. Anything Dio was welcome in my collection. I've seen Dio more times than I can even tell you. <laughs> Probably 10 or 12 times I've seen him live. Um, I've seen him in big stadiums, uh, headlining and opening. I saw him opening for Maiden in a big stadium, but I saw him headlining in, at the Spectrum of Philadelphia on the uh, what second tour they did. Um, and then I saw him in, in small clubs. I saw him in a small country club, he, literally country music club here in, in New Mexico. But I also saw him at the Tower Theater on the Holy Diver Tour in, uh, in Pennsylvania. So, yeah, more times than I can even tell you. Dio's always put on a great show and has always had great people uh, playing his band. A little thrash metal from Protector. This is a band I have really been getting into in the last couple of years. Uh, so if you've been watching any of my metal update videos, vinyl update videos, you've probably seen me show several of these. Uh, as I stumble across them, I've been buying them up. Um, this one was actually fairly inexpensive for a brand new release. It was 1999, uh, which is great, you know, these days for a brand new vinyl. So, like I said, thrash metal, pretty aggressive thrash metal. I uh, love the vocals. It's, it's not death metal vocals, but he's got a real aggressive, thrashy style. Um, so, what can I say? <laughs> uh, this next one I already had on vinyl, but whenever I see a really clean copy of this, I always grab it. It's absolutely one of my favorite um, rock albums, progressive rock albums, but this is Carrie Livgren, Seeds of Change. This is a non-promo copy. I almost always find promo copies, and usually they're tore up. They always have excessive ring wear. Uh, I have a white label promo that's like in mint condition with a gold stamp on the back. This one here is just a regular version, but man, it is super clean. I already played this again, and, and it's, again, it's just one of those albums, whenever I see it, if it's inexpensive, even if it is a, even if it is a little worn, I'll still pick it up, because it's such a great album. This is uh, Ronnie James Dio sings a couple tracks on here, and, and 
superb, especially um, love uh, Mask of the Great Deceiver. It's just a brilliant track. If you haven't heard that song, look up uh, Kerry Livgren, Mask of the Great Deceiver on YouTube, and like I said, uh, Ryan James Dio singing, great song. So highly, highly uh, recommended if you don't have this album. Kerry Livgren, of course, being the guitar player and one of the early songwriters for Kansas. This is cool. Uh, I already have copies of this vinyl and CD, but I just this was unique and it wasn't real expensive and it sounded good. The record store actually played it while we were there, but this is one of my favorite albums from Alice Cooper. And this is Welcome to My Nightmare. This is obviously a um, a pressing from uh, I don't know Vietnam or somewhere, and I was over there because uh, you can always tell because they always have the single color pressings where they just use like. The, they probably used like the cyan or the black plate and just ran cyan ink through the press and that's what you get. Uh, and then on the back, it's uh, it's pretty funny because you can see all the label information and all the legal information has just been literally blacked out with a marker. <laughs> so I'm pretty, I think it was I think it's a Vietnamese pressing or uh, something, something in that area. I can't remember exactly. It doesn't say anywhere on here where it's pressed at, but. I just thought it was unique and cool, uh, so I grabbed it. And like I said, the store played it while we were there. It sounded really clean. So, Welcome to My Nightmare, Alice Cooper. Classic 70s hard rock. Just a super creepy album. Perfect for Halloween. Uh, now, this is an album I've heard before. I've seen Aaron the Metal Theologian and Steve show this album, uh, as well as their second album, which I'd like to find as well. Um, I found this copy for under 10 bucks, and Steve was like, man, you need to get it. It's so good. And he was right. It's really good. Really well done, 70s hard and heavy rock and roll. Um, slightly proggy, slightly psych at times, but mostly just straightforward hard rock. This is White Witch um, on the Capricorn label. So if you're in that 70s hard rock sound, highly recommend. If you, if you find a, stumble across a copy like I did for a good price, pick it up. You'll enjoy it, even if you only play it a few times. I mean, under 10 bucks, this thing will definitely get, I'll get my money's worth out of it, let's put it that way. This is actually uh, an album that Steve gave to me as uh, a gift. Uh, super stoked because I love this band, as you guys know. But this is Genesis. This is a bootleg from the Duke tour. Uh, You'll Love Us Live is what it's called. It's got... Uh, somebody made this nice little card for it. You can see it's an old old 80s pressing, which is cool. Um, but it's got... Um, Turn it on again. Follow you, follow me. I know what I like. The Knife, In the Cage, and The Raven, and Afterglow. Kind of a... Uh, medley of those kind of songs. And then it's got the Carpet Crawler, Squonk, Behind the Lines, Duchess, and Guide Vocal. So, Genesis, you'll love us live. Uh, I'm all over the map musically here, um, from prog rock to heavy metal to southern rock. This is The Outlaws. Probably one of their well, most well-known albums. I picked this up because I've been working on some uh, reissues from one of the former members of this band doing some of his solo stuff. Um, but anyhow, this has probably got one of their most well-known tunes on it and not Green Grass and High Tides, nope, but uh, Ghost Riders in the Sky. Uh, just classic Southern rock. Not quite, you know, the heavy style like uh, Blackfoot or Molly Hatchet. Um, more in the vein of, you know, like stuff that Skinner was doing. Pure Prairie League and those kind of bands. So the Outlaws, very clean copy. It was very inexpensive, but it was just so clean. Uh, and I had been working on this, you know, some of this guy's stuff. So I just grabbed it just so I could give it a listen. Hadn't heard this album in decades and didn't own it. So uh, this was another gift from from Steve. Saigon on Kick, still sealed, brand new. I haven't opened up this copy yet. Looking forward to listening to it on vinyl. I've got the CD. I've had the CD for years. Uh, generally thrown in as being a it's funny it depends on who you ask um, a lot of people think of them as a hair band they weren't a hair band nor were they an alternative they were just a good solid hard rock band um, very unique sound great band unfortunately um, just got kind of got lumped in with the wrong genre and they were kind of around at the wrong time you know grunge became the big thing and, and Saigon Kick were just late on the scene so great Canadian hard rock from Moxie this is a uh, no, ter uh, excuse me. This is Mike Reno and Moxie thinking about you. Just one I didn't have. Again, this was from uh, Steve, and this was um, Italian. This is Wasteland. I haven't even heard this one yet, so this is one I'll be spinning this week. Uh, as I recall, him telling me this just straightforward new wave of traditional heavy metal. 
It is a seven song full length album. Like I, I haven't heard it, so you guys probably may know more about this than I do. So, um, Italian on High Roller Records. The next one I haven't heard yet either. I have heard it a long time ago. It's been a long time. But this is, I mean, probably four, five, six years is the last time I heard this thing. Um, this is Brave by Marillion. Where did this come out originally? I can't even remember now. Maybe it's maybe it wasn't that long ago. Maybe it's actually I can't remember. Maybe it wasn't as long as I remember it, because this I don't think this album's that old. This is anyhow. This is a gatefold album. Double album. Of course Marillion being the UK prog band from from the eighties. Double album. I think it's just black vinyl as I recall. Yeah, black vinyl. Love the cover. I love the spot gloss varnish. If it gets the light right, you can kind of see it on there. Really cool graphics on this thing. It might even be, not be gloss varnish. It might be a UV coating. Very nice. Again, that was a gift from Steve. Um, <laughs> actually, the next one was too. This is uh, Ian Gillen Band, Scarbus. And he... He texted me one day, said, hey, I'm at the store, and I found this. Do you have this one? And I did not, so I, I, anything Ian Gillen is working, welcome in my uh, collection. This is Ian Gillen Band, though, which is different than Gillen. Ian Gillen Band was a little more sometimes jazz fusion-like, uh, whereas Gillen was more new wave of British heavy metal style. But I liked both, so cool cover art, too. Almost looks like a heavy metal album, but it's not. All right, a couple more here. Um... 11 minutes in, I gotta hurry because I've got all those seven inches to sew from the same trip. Now, this one I didn't pick up there, or nor was it a gift. Steve and I both um, bought copies of this, and we decided because it was coming all the way from uh, Jolly Rogers Records, which I believe is in Greece, um, the shipping was like $30, um, which made, you know, add, add the $25 they were charging for the record to it, you've got a $60 record. And uh, so what we did was we both ordered copies, and he ordered both, and I just sent him the cash, and we split the shipping, uh, make it a little cheaper. But yeah, this is the uh, Tunes of War live, live at Wacken, I believe it is, Tunes of Wacken. Um, single album, I haven't even opened it yet, literally I just got this uh, when I was out there for me. It came in the mail the day that I arrived, and so I brought it back with me. So I will be listening to this one this week too. Love Grave Digger, collect anything from them, fantastic German power metal if you through the 90s when a lot of bands were doing alternative and other crap they were releasing some of the most superb power metal albums ever um so anyhow great stuff and he gave me this one as well this is halloween this is their skyfall ep uh very extensive packaging man it, it's got uh embossing it's got let's see if we can get to catch the glare but it's got a uh there you go, you can kind of see the glare going on there. So it's got a UV coating and embossing. Gate fold. Offer two songs. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's quite the quite the packaging for two songs. And I mean it is Halloween, so I, you know, they're a well-known band. It's also got an insert. And colored vinyl. I mean that's pretty extensive, pretty nice packaging for a two-song, two-song single. Uh, again, that was a gift from Steve, so very cool. All right, let me get into these seven inches real quick. What I got here, 15 minutes. Maybe what I'm gonna do is uh, break this up into a second video, and I'll do the Atlanta Hall Part Two, and I'll show all the seven inches because there's a huge stack of, of seven inches here. So let's get. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna cut it here. Appreciate y'all watching. Stay tuned for Part Two of this video, which will be the seven-inch vinyl haul from Atlanta, Georgia. That's it. God bless. Stay strong.